Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin, and this week we are going to get to the much-anticipated review of the Amplified Nation Steel String Singer. Um, as a few of you who watch the show will know, a couple weeks ago, um, it appeared behind me suddenly, and uh, I let everybody know that I was going to be doing a little review of the new amp that I had added to the wet-dry wet rig. Um, but... What I didn't really talk about in the time was what was happening. So uh, recently, Palin Music started carrying Amplified Nation amps. And I have been a huge two-rock guy for years. I love their amps. Um, but I've been trying to find a companion to my two-rocks to use in a wet-dry wet rig to really sound good. And as you all know, I am a huge pedal junkie. So anytime I'm searching for a new amp, I always take a few pedals to the shop with me so I can play through them. I don't like buying stuff sight unseen online. I, I like to hear it a little bit first if I can. Sometimes you can't avoid it, but but when I can, I like to go to a store and play it. So I got really excited when Palin announced that they had these, these uh, Amplified Nation amps. And I stopped by their Joplin store and there was this Jade Amplified Nation Overdrive Reverb. And it was uh, sitting on a little pedestal and I thought, I gotta play this. Plugged it in and it was gorgeous. Just stunningly gorgeous. The overdrive in it was gnarly and cool and something totally unique, but then the clean tones just sang. But I didn't have any of my pedals there. I had the, the pedals that Palin had, but I like to listen to it through my specific pedal. So I thought, ah, I, I'm not gonna pull the trigger on this yet. I, I need to go get some pedals and, and try playing through it. And then I didn't get a chance to get back down to Springfield. Um, and for those who want to hear what that amp sounds like, Nate just did an excellent review. If you go onto uh, Palin's YouTube channel um, and just look for the most recent video uh, from Nate or just search for Amplified Nation Overdrive Reverb, he actually shot a little demo of that, of that amp. It's gorgeous. So I found out that the new store that Palin uh, opened in Overland Park, which is really near my house, um, had a overdrive reverb combo unit there. So I thought, awesome. Grabbed my pedal board and I headed down to the shop and got everything set up, played the amp. I was like, oh man, this sounds great. And then I played my pedals in it and I was like, it's good, but that amp has a little bit of a compression, a little bit of a darkness to it, especially if you use your pedals in conjunction with the overdrive circuit. Um, you can lose some of the, the higher sounds because it starts to compress, not in a bad way, but my problem is if I was using that amp by itself, it would have been perfect, but because I'm using it with two other amps, I really need pedals to shine on their own and, and sound very good across the spectrum. And what I was getting out of the overdrive reverb, especially with some of the darker fuzz pedals that I use, just wasn't working. It wasn't giving me that sound I was looking for. And I was so disappointed because I thought that was the amp for me. I thought this is the one. And when I played it by itself, it sounded great. But when I played it with the other two amps, it just did not meld well, well with them. And I was so sad. And uh, so Tyler Shirelli happened to be in the shop at the time. And he was about to head out. And he was like, oh, man, I've been playing this other amp, this Steel String Singer. You need to go check that out. So I thought, well, okay. I mean, I love Stevie Ray Vaughan. And Stevie Ray Vaughan played a Steel Street Singer. Um, but I wasn't really familiar with it. So I sat down a little research on, on the Dumble Steel String Singer. And for those who don't know about it, it is, it's a fascinating story. So, um, Stevie Ray Vaughan did, when he first started out, play a Dumble Steel String Singer, usually with a couple other Fender amps as well. Um, but the Steel String Singer, as far as we know, Dumble only made a dozen or so of those. And we only really know where five or six of them are. So the other five or six are in somebody's private collection and no one knows where they are or what they sound like or anything. Um, but the few that we know where they are, they were all belong to some really, really famous guitarists. Um, of course, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Eric Johnson. They loved that, that sound. But in researching it, it's very interesting. The reason that there's not a lot of those is they are very different than all the other amps that, that Dumble made in that they don't break up. And when I say don't break up, 
I mean the steel string singer, you can crank the volume knob, you can crank the master volume, and it is almost impossible to get that amp to really break up into any kind of distortion like you would typically find on a 100 watt amp. And, and they even make a 150 watt version of it. Um, so it was fascinating the way that he created this. And so um, I, I first plugged the amp in and I thought, well, let's let's see how it is. And I'd read about this and I thought, let's try it. So I waited till the store was empty and it was just the sales reps were there. And I looked over at Spencer and Chase and I was like, is this okay? And he said, yeah. So we cranked it. And I was shocked. I had Chase hop on a drum kit and he was playing along and I was just, just kind of playing a little riff along with his drumming. And I could hear every note. And I was sitting right beside those drums. I could hear every note cutting through the mix, but not a drop of driver distortion on it, which was just surreal. I'd, I'd never experienced that before with an amp. So I thought, well, okay, got to hook up the pedal board. So I, uh, I did not use the effects loop on the pedal board at all. I just plugged my pedal board directly into the amp. And what I was hearing was the exact perfect tone of every pedal that I turned onto that amp. Essentially, what that amp was doing was taking that pedal sound and amplifying it and allowing it to shine. And I've never played an amp that could do that, could not impart its own tone. It just took pedals and did it perfectly. So it blew me away. And because the other two amps I use have their own color, I thought, okay, this is going to be the perfect, just give us a little different sound for that wet, dry, wet. And boy, was I right. But that's enough talking about it. Let's go hop in and I'm going to show you the amp. We're going to do a little deep dive on it. We'll walk you through what the different settings are so you can hear it here in person. Join me over at the pedal board real quick. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the trusty Cower Super Chief. We'll just kind of live in the bridge. I might switch to the neck a little bit. Um, and we're just going to walk you through the different settings on the Steel String Singer so you can hear some of the tones. And then I'm going to set everything up. Right now, I've just got it by itself uh, running single so you can hear it. And then I'm going to set up the wet, dry, wet rig and let you hear uh, how it sounds in the wet, dry, wet. So right now, you're just going to be hearing one amp by itself. So let's play with the different settings. So right now I've got everything set up and clean. Um, I am bypassing. Let's walk through the controls real quick. So basically you have a master volume, I mean, a, a initial volume. You've got bright caps, deep caps, and then the rock jazz switch, which is so prevalent on a lot of the old dumbbells. Um, and then you have a treble mid and bass control. And then what's really unique to the Steel String Singer is you have two filter controls. These are notch filters. So as you click them over, you're basically reducing or boosting the highs and the lows. And it has a really interesting effect on the sound. We'll mess with that a little bit. Then you have this switch here, which is also controlled by a foot switch. This is a FET bypass. So there's two inputs here, a normal and a FET input. Um, the FET input gives it a natural boost right at the beginning of the signal. Um, I like living there, but if you if you try to crank the amp with that turned on, it gets super loud and can just distort and, and do funky stuff. So I'll show you what both of those sound like. Then you have your reverb send and return, your master volume or level, and then your presence knob. I'm just going to leave the presence knob alone. And we'll keep it kind of in the middle. But um, So let's hear just what it sounds like clean, just like that. See, just a really beautiful... Nice, chimey cleans. Nothing fancy there. It's it's just a really nice, clean tone. Um, but I'm going to show you the difference when I boost it into the FET stage now. See how much louder that gets? hear that reverb that reverb tank sounds amazing when I take that reverb completely out of the mix see how stale it sounds that reverb just adds so much depth and so much movement there it is amazing um, so first things first I'm gonna turn the FET off and I want you to hear I've got the level set at about two right now I'm gonna take the volume all the way up because usually when you would do that on an amp it would drive it into compression so let's see <laughs> That's at nine o'clock. Let's take it to about one o'clock. Let's 
let's take it all the way up to three o'clock. And then all the way cranked. See, it's much louder, but there's no gain being added into that sound. You get a little bit when you start boosting the level, but really you're not pushing the amp into overdrive. That is the beauty of the Steel String Singer, is it's just clean, <laughs> so stinking clean. So what do these other switches do? What, what else can we do with this? So let's, let's take a few things here and uh, look at them. First thing I'm gonna do is show you the, the uh, rock and versus the jazz. It's not highly noticeable. <laughs> So we go into that mode. You can hear it brought up the bass just a little bit and it gave the mids just a little different hump to them. So it just changes the sound. I like the rock setting. And when we add a distortion pedal in a little bit, you'll see it actually helps a lot with the distortion pedals. Um, I'm gonna leave it in that mode, and then what I'll also do is I'm gonna add in the bright switch. Now you're gonna hear instantly a lot more highs, a little fuzz come through the back. Versus. So you can see a noticeable difference there. It's, it's a pretty massive difference. Um, let's go to the deep switch as well. Overloading my mic a little. It can make that real, real heavy bassy sound. So really fun when you're doing a baritone. Um, I found just some a little experimenting. It's, it's pretty cool with a baritone. All right, now your EQs are very, very standard. You've just basically got your treble. If we turn the treble all the way to... It just adds that little bit of treble into there. The mids are very similar. All the way down, all the way up. It's not a massive curve, but there's just a little bit there. And then the bass. So you can tell, it just adds a little bit of volume into there but these notch filters are really, really where it's at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it up kind of like I would normally play it. I usually like having the bright switch on. Um, what we'll do, actually for this, I'm gonna take the bright switch out. Now watch when I take the high filter all the way down. See how it smooths out those highs? Take it all the way up. Way louder. It's almost like adding a bright switch into there, but it's a little bit more controlled and it kind of curves and shapes that, that curve really well. I like to usually set this in the like second position there. And then with the lows, we'll do the exact same thing. Take the lows down. Take the lows up. See how it's boosting the volume on them. It's bringing them out in the mix a little bit more. Again, very useful when you're doing like a baritone or maybe you're doing a solo project, you don't have a bass player, you wanna add a little bit more thud into there, you really can. I usually live with this right in the middle or down one. Um, and then I turn the, the reverb tank up just a little bit. Okay, the last thing I wanna do, I know I, I talked to you about this and, and I really wanna point out why I absolutely love this before we jump into the wet, dry, wet rig. Um, I told you how great this takes drive pedals. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the Audio Kitchen Fake Plastic Trees. It's just kind of a nice drive pedal, nothing crazy about it, it's just a good sounding drive. And I want you to hear how this sounds with this amp um, because the amp, for being an amp that doesn't break up, it just allows all the fuzziness and the grit of the pedal to just shine through. Um, I've taken our filters back to kind of a middle position. I'm just gonna kind of leave everything alone. I'm gonna turn the bass down just a little bit treble up just a little. I'm not gonna turn the bright switch on. I've got the volume down a little, and I'm not gonna use too much reverb here. We'll just use a little bit. So let's hear the clean tone. All right, ready? Here goes the gain.
it's just so loud. So yeah, it takes a pedal and just adds that serious crunch, that fizz, everything that the pedal gives to it. Now, this can be unforgiving. If you've got a pedal that's hard to control and hard to tame, you have to do a lot of tweaking on there to really get the sound to be right because it's, it's not allowing your amp to tame it. It's gonna give you exactly what you put into it. So it is an unforgiving amp, but wow, if you do it right, the sounds can be amazing. All right, now for our final experiment, I've hooked everything back up. We're gonna just be running through the standard aux rig and everything. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you what my current rig sounds like with just the two amps before I add in the steel string singer. So I'll give you a little idea of what the clean tone sounds like. See, really beautiful, sounds great, right? Until we add in the steel string singer and then watch what happens. I'm gonna take the steel string out again. And then add it back in. See how much clearer those notes pop through and how it just accentuates every little bit of the treble in the mids. It's beautiful. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a drive pedal in so you can hear how this affects the entire sound when you start adding pedals into the mix. So I've got just a regular old drive pedal set up on my board, nothing fancy. It's just kind of a decent mid-range Klon sound driven uh, to give it a little rock uh, edge. So I'm gonna play it without the steel string singer first, and then I'm gonna add in the steel string singer so you can hear what happens to the note definition. So um, you may wanna turn down your volume just a little bit. Um, this will boost it up a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to EQ it all right, but just in case. All right, so first of all, here's without the steel string. <laughs> Now let's add the steel string in there. Now let's do like a little run too. Now we'll add the steel string in. You can just hear the articulation, the notes, every note ringing out crisper and truer. Truly, truly amazing. Okay, I know that demonstration was nowhere near as in-depth and crazy as Nate's review of the Amplified Nation Overdrive Reverb from last week. If you get a chance, go back and look at that. That was absolutely phenomenal. But I just wanted you to hear why I chose the Steel String Singer over the Overdrive Reverb and to let you hear what happens when you find three amps in a wet, dry, wet rig that complement each other rather than compete with each other and how you can use that to broaden a frequency spectrum to truly fill things out. And for those that are recording at home and trying to do silent recording, I also wanted you to see how that makes everything sound more room-like and more amp-like when you can mix in different sounds from different amps to create this beautiful mix together. It's, it is truly, truly amazing. Well, I hope that helps out. Um, if you watched last week's episode on the Origin Halcyon, uh, next week I am finally gonna have the DCX boost in, so we're gonna be covering that next week. So please come back and join us then. We'll use it through these amps and see how everything sounds together. So please come back, visit us. Uh, in the meantime, if you wanna follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is what's this button do Dustin. I'll have the link to it down below. Thanks as always to my friends at Palin for helping hook me up with uh, uh, supporting the channel. And please everyone, um, 
I want you to comment down below if you've had some experience with these amps or you're running your own wet dry wet mix and you've had uh, trouble trying to find ways to mix them together, comment down below. I'd love to talk to you about it, help you out through it, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Amplified Nation amps. So thank you all so much for coming out this week. We'll talk to you soon and have a wonderful week.